Hello and thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a training tutorial video on the Mako MA25E audiometer and my name's Peter and I'm from Prism Acoustics and Training. If you have any queries you can email me at training at prismat, P -R -I -S -M -A -T .com .au. Uh, feel free to email me if you can help you any further. So without any further ado let's uh, go into this and see what this audiometer does. So this is a front panel of the Mako MA25E. It doesn't show the E, it unfortunately doesn't show it anywhere, uh, but you can tell it's the E if you press this button here, the frequency, it'll switch to HW there. It'll show you that it's got automatic function. So the difference between the 25 and the 25E, the 25 is just straight manual. This 25E has automatic function as well. So as you can see in the back, we've got a USB cable plugged in here black for the patient response, red for the right ear headphone, blue for the left ear headphone, and that's basically the uh, connections into the back of the unit. So the front panel has a main display, we'll look at that in a bit more detail shortly. Four function buttons, function one, two, three and four, and these will actually change depending on the status or the mode that the audiometer is in. So these are multi-function buttons. The volume of the output, the hearing level dial in decibel is controlled by this rotary dial here. The tone switch is pressed to turn the tone on and there'll be little lines on this speaker symbol whenever the actual tone is going through. This little box here will be solid black when the patient presses the patient response button. This shows that the unit is being powered by an external power source. And the frequency uh, controller here, you rotate that and it will change the frequencies here anywhere from normally for screening audiometry 500 up to 8,000 hertz. So this uh, tutorial video should be used in conjunction with the uh, quick start guide that is in place that we've provided for workplace audiometry program and the Mako MA25E audiometer. So feel free to have a look at those documents. If you haven't got them, email, them, email me and I can send those through to you. This frequency controller has an additional function. It also has a press button here. And if you press that, it changes the display, which we'll have a look at shortly, which will then also uh, be able to control the automatic functions uh, the automatic testing function of the audiometer. All right, so that's the layout of the front panel. Uh, let's have a look at the normal screen here. Here's the close-up of it. Again, the dB uh, of the presentation level. This is the frequency that's being tested. There's no sound coming out of the earphones because there would be lines here if that was the case. And this turns a solid black when the patient hits their response button. We're currently testing the right ear. Now, when we look at the audiometer, if we press this button here, you just push it in and it switches over to automatic test mode. This HW is Houston Westlake. That's the International Automatic Testing Protocol. If you press F4, it will start that mode. It'll just start running the test. The dB levels you'll see will change on the screen here. It'll start at 1,000. It'll go up to 8,000. It'll come back to 1,000 and retest it and go to 500. Uh, so it does the retest automatically in accordance with the international standard. Once that is finished, it'll switch over to the opposite ear and it will repeat the process and at the end the test will finish and if you're using the workplace audiometry software you can then transfer the data either automatically or manual into the software so it's all very handy if you want to actually see the thresholds uh, either during a manual test or an automatic test all you have to do is press this uh, button here let me have a look so just pull up the screen here this one. So this shows you the actual decibel levels that have been obtained during the hearing test. You can scroll through forward and backward here and uh, you can delete all the storage. It's got storage for quite a few hearing test results in here. Now when you first get your audiometer it'll have 125, 250, 750. You can also set that up and in the uh, quick start guide it tells you how to delete those particular frequencies because when you're testing screening audiometry 
in Australia, uh, you only want to test 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000, and 8,000. So it's all pretty self-explanatory. And look, the thing with hearing testing is the best way to actually do a hearing test is to put the headphones on yourself, grab the patient response button, and turn the controls on the audiometer, um, and just get a feel for it, you know, increase the volume up and down, change the frequency, push the tone on so that you can hear when the tone comes on, you can see what happens on the display, push the patient response button, and you'll see what happens on the display, change the ears from right to left, backwards and forwards, hit the pulse and warble tone these are two different tones that are very seldom used uh, but you can use this audiometer in both both manual and automatic mode so the main thing is this display screen it controls a lot of different features but again grab the audiometer put the headphones on and uh, you'll be able to see exactly what's going on now one of the things with using the audiometer you can use it as a standalone unit with the headphones plugged straight into the audiometer uh, but if you're using it with a soundproof booth these cables here these headphone cables would be plugged into the patch panel into the inside of the soundproof booth and then from the patch panel on the outside booth would be a set of patch cables and they would go from the patch panel on the outside into here so they would connect through here to the booth through the booth wall through the patch panel and then into the headphones of course if you're not using a booth you'd plug your headphones and patient response straight into the back the other thing with this audiometer it has multiple methods of powering it up you can either use the external plug pack which is supplied with the audiometer just uh, and that'll run it off there if it's plugged into a computer uh, so that this usb cable plugs into a usb port on a pc the pc will actually have enough power usually to power this audiometer so you don't need an external power supply it'll actually draw the power from the computer and if you're not doing that you can actually uh, have internal batteries uh, inside there it takes i think three or four double a batteries there's a uh, flap on the back there's a little cover you just flick it open and you'll see where the batteries go and uh, you can run the batteries you can run it on battery power if you're going out into the field so you don't have to worry about getting power for it if you're using it in a clinic i'd recommend you don't run it on batteries because you're gonna have to monitor the battery level and change them over so much easier just plug it into a plug pack into the wall and power it permanently or plug it into a computer and run it off the usb power from that computer all right so that's using it with a booth and without a booth if you connect it to a pc it comes with the usb cable so just plug it in it only goes one way and uh, when you get the audiometer first up uh, what you need to do is set up the parameters now there's a lot of parameters you can set up but really the only one you want to do is delete those three frequencies you don't want to test 125 250 and 750 and you do this by pressing f1 and f4 together for about three seconds and then you'll see the setup menu so once you're in the setup menu uh then press the button uh the down button a number of times until you get the, the frequencies and uh, you'll be able to change the uh, frequencies by pressing the change button so it's fairly self-explanatory the audiometer does come with a little instruction book uh, but if you hold down f1 and f4 for three seconds you get into the setup menu these buttons two and three uh, control the up and down on the menu and when you get to the frequencies you press the change button and you'll have all the frequencies here and all you got to do is press the change and it'll switch from on to off so it'll say 125 hertz on you press the change button 125 will be off that means it doesn't get tested do the same for 250 do the same for 750 and then save it and exit and that's all set so it's fairly uh, explanatory in fact once you're in the if you press that uh, f1 and f4 together all you've got to do is press the down button nine times until the word frequencies is highlighted and then press f1 which is the change button um, highlight 125 Hertz and then press f1 which is a change button and it will change from on to off and then just repeat that for 250 and 750 hertz then press f4 which will have a save word written in there and when you finish press f4 again 
and it will save the whole lot. All the parameters you change will be saved. So it's pretty easy to do. And uh, then when you start the test automatically, it'll only test those frequencies and the test will be conducted in a much quicker fashion. So if you want to test in automatic mode, uh, press the frequency button down. It'll go into the automatic test mode, which will be uh, this other screen here. Let's go to the right one. See how it says HW, Hughes and Westlake. So you just push the F4 button underneath HW and uh, the test will start automatically. At the end of the test, press F3 if you want to view. So it'll tell you the thresholds. So if you press F3, it'll all the thresholds will come up. If you're testing manually, then you can write them down or you can save it to the software program. There's a basic software program that comes with the audiometer. The more comprehensive program is workplace audiometry. And that's what we tend to use in Australia because it does all the reports and all the references and percentages of hearing loss for each different state as they're all different, unfortunately. Uh, so it's a very simple process. Um, and the results will be transferred from this audiometer directly to the workplace audiometry program at the end of the test. If you have a look at the workplace audiometry software tutorial video, it'll tell you how to do all that or refer to the um, guide that we've written, the installation setup and operation, uh, the quick start guide that we've written here at Prism Acoustics and Training, and that'll get you through it as well. Look, if you want to test manually, of course you can do that. All you've got to do is we'll go back to this other screen, the normal screen. Uh, we'll get back to here. Okay, select the ear that you're going to test, adjust the decibels that you want to present the tone at, select the frequency, um, and you press you know, F1 to change the ears, select the desired dB level with the hearing level rotary controller, select the frequency that you want to be testing using the frequency control, and press the tone switch. That'll make the tone come through in their ear. And you'll see the little lines on here indicating the tone is switched on. If they can hear it, they'll press the patient response button and this will turn black. Keep doing that for all the frequencies you want to test. Use your normal protocol, which is the Houston Westlake technique. If you're not sure how to do that, refer back to your notes when you did your training. Uh, present the tone using the switch bar. And at the completion of the test, um, press F1 to sw switch to the other ear. Switch to the left ear and repeat the process till they've all been tested. So uh, once you've done that, if you want to then go along and see what the results were. You can also, you know, just write all this down on an audiogram form as you're going, if you're doing it manually, uh, or if you push store, it'll store the results for that frequency, and then you keep going and do all the frequencies for the test. But uh, if you want to then look at uh, the actual results, you can just select um, the thresholds and it'll show you on the display here. Again, the best way is to set it up Put it on yourself, do a test, an automatic test, do a manual test, set up your uh, software program, transfer the data backwards and forwards, and do it without a live patient in front of you. There's nothing worse than the pressure of having to learn something new and someone sitting there and it's not working properly because you're still working out how it all works. So it's a very easy audiometer to operate, but like everything, first time you do it, it's um, a, a steep learning curve, but hopefully this tutorial video has helped take a bit of the steepness out of the curve for you. Again, any queries, uh, any problems, any information you need, uh, send me an email, training at prismat, P-R-I-S-M-A-T, which is Prism Acoustics and Training. So prismat, P-R-I-S-M-A-T. Uh, training at prismat.com.au. Shoot me an email, more than happy to hear from you. And thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.